we had inherited an economy that was uh, in a very terrible state uh, in 1994. And here we had commitments that we were making, and these commitments had to be made, and um, uh, had to be met. To meet these commitments, it meant that we had to be rebuilding an economy. And the question that came was, what kind of an economy were we building? And hence comes the issue of an inclusive growth. Uh, but what do we mean by this inclusive growth? Because uh, you are asking, how does it touch individuals? And that is where the concept of inclusivity, uh, inclusivity comes from. The first component of it is that, well, for you to even talk of inclusive growth, you must, first, you must have growth in the, first, uh, uh, in the first place. So unless you have growth, you can't even talk of inclusive, uh, inclusive growth. And uh, alongside uh, growth have got to be, of course, the issue of uh, development. And the second uh, concept that I'd like, uh, I thought I would like to uh, bring with is to then think of the inclusivity and what that, what that inclusivity is. And for a country like South Africa with high unemployment, inclusivity necessarily means getting as many people as possible engaged in meaningful economic activity. And I'm deliberately using the term meaningful economic activity, not just employment, yeah. because a, one of the conversations South Africa must have is whether we want to be a nation of job seekers or a nation of job creators. And when you talk of job creators, that basically means that people must be engaged in a meaningful economic, uh, economic activity. And the third uh, thing that uh, I thought I would like to bring with as part of the uh, inclusivity, which people tend to talk but uh, do not quite uh, bring to the fourth, is the issue of intergenerational equity. And what do I mean by intergenerational equity? The commitments that we make today have got to be sustained into the future. And that talks to the resources that we have in meeting those commitments. And the Constitution is uh, uh, very deliberate uh, uh, on this uh, because it talks about meeting these commitments within the state's available resources. So the authors of our constitutions were students of history. They understood this thing that to meet these commitments, you need resources. But the issue of intergenerational equity becomes important because what you cannot do is to allow the excesses of today's generations to put a burden on our children and their children's children. So we want things today, and there aren't resources to meet those things, so the government piles on debt, and that debt must be serviced in the future, and all of us will not be there to service the debt because government borrows 20, 30 years into the future, and some of us might not even be there in the next 30 years, and we leave that burden with our children out and, their, and, their, and our children's children. And that says to, uh, what that talks to is that, to the extent that governments end up piling up on debt, that that debt should be creating assets and a future uh, for the country. Yeah. If you pile up debt just to meet the excesses of today's generation, then there is uh, intergenerational inequity, and that uh, uh, becomes a problem. And then let me just uh, close uh, 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 these things and then say that. Uh, at the heart of all of this, we actually need growth to be accelerated. So all of that package, the growth have got to be accelerated because it is through growth that we generate uh, we generate uh, resources. And later on, uh, as we converse, I can then talk to some of the elements that uh, I think countries that have sustained levels of uh, high economic activity, what do they have in common? Because we just have to be looking there to see what those countries had done. We do not have to go and rediscover the way.